this is our friends at uh, PNR. This is a project that this paper's been given here at the short course, and it's updated every few years to where they were running their wells, looking at what their failures were and what was going on, estimated what would continue on. They did a complete optimization system. They start looking at their designs. They start running dynamometers, looking at fluid levels, and putting on rod pump controllers. And their failure rate has just dramatically come down. Here's just a list of multiple papers that are available. A lot of these are SBE papers that you can see some pretty amazing numbers on there on electrical savings and failure reduction. Again, you look on the production side, some of those numbers are not as large because they were probably in most cases over pumping the wells. But if you look at those, like the second one, 14% production increase, well, if you say 48% failure, they had a lot of wells down a lot. So we're just pumping now in those days that they were not. Lots of different types of ways to have a rod pump controller. Of course, first is time clocks, good tool. Amperage we've tried in the past, but we've had issues with the utilities changing their voltage and what's going on there, and it affected what we saw at the well sites. Uh, there are some methods that look at RPM and motor speed to see if you're seeing changes in that to determine if that's pump off or not. Uh, there's some things that you've taken data that we try to look at motor power and derive what a dynamometer card looks like from it. Not quite as accurate, but a way of doing it. The most common we've used that became the real success of controllers is looking at the surface dynamometer card. And now it's gone down to where we look at the true downhole card to see what's happening at the pump. Uh, over the last few years, what's really starting to get more popular is using a variable speed drive with the well to where we don't cycle the well, we just change the speed every stroke so that we match the pumping system with the reservoir. You can also do some things with gas engine control and look at some gas rates versus just fluid, and we'll cover some of that. So typical well site, um, one of the things that most every vendor will harp on you is having good grounding. Since this is electronics, we've got to make sure we have good grounding at these well sites. We really like to ground to the casing. Uh, it's hard to get a good ground rod in down here in West Texas. But typically what you'll see is either a load cell that is mounted on the carrier bar with the polish rod clamp, and this will get us our Y-axis on our dynamometer card. That's the load on the rod string. We can also look at load on the beam, and this is not as popular as it used to be. Uh, that is not as accurate. We have some problems with temperature change that we don't know if this beam is stretching and contracting from the temperature or is it actually from the load. We've got ways of calculating it out, but it's not quite as accurate. Then we have to look at position, and there's multiple ways of position. Uh, that is actually our x-axis, our stroke on the dynamometer card. Uh, there's ways of looking at the motor and the crank. Since this is a linkage, we can determine every time the motor turns how much the horse head moves. Uh, there was a way that we used a potentiometer with an arm mount that we tied to the walking beam to see the angle. And then another way is to use an inclinometer that you actually mount up on the beam so that we can see the angle. All of these are different methods. They all have different amounts of accuracy issues and or maintenance issues. The load cell has been the most common that in years past was probably our highest maintenance problem. Uh, the load cell's gotten a lot tougher and it really is not the issue it was in the past and this is what's pretty highly promoted by about all vendors so that we can get data accurate enough so that you can do an analysis back at your laptop or actually back at your office. One of the things that uh, you'll start seeing a lot out there is it looks like a foam cord now. A lot of them are going to a coiled cable instead of just a standard cable and they've done that because our biggest failures it's right there at the load cell. That little nut doesn't fit real good with a 36 inch pipe wrench and a rig hands. And that's typically the problem. They get up there with a 36 trying to loosen it and they tear everything up. So what we tell them with these coiled cables is don't disconnect it. If you have a failure, take off the polish rod clamp, just slide the load cell off, it stretches out, set it down. So they don't ever have to mess with it. The beam transistors we talked about earlier, these can either be welded on or clamped on. Uh, we have found when we clamp them, we lose a little bit more accuracy. 
plus we don't really like it, we're on the side of the beam instead of right in the center of the beam. So we see a little bit more deflection there as well. Uh, we're not using near as many of these. Uh, we used to use them a lot more up in Canada where we had heavy crude and you'd get rod float conditions and that would really hammer the load cells. Uh, this is what we use on what uh, we call Hall Effects, where we're actually uh, having a magnet on your motor and one on your crank so we can pick up a signal. Now, that signal allows us to look at the full geometry of the unit to determine where the horse head is during the stroke. We found these to be very low maintenance and a very accurate position. If we don't get accurate position data, uh, Lynn, maybe today or tomorrow, he'll be talking more about that, that we can start skewing the card and it ends up skewing the downhole card so you start getting things that you may think are happening that are not real. So it's very important that if you're going to do an analysis that we get good accurate data. When controllers start getting popular it was really because of a dynamometer card. This is what we finally start finding out ways that we could see what's happening, that we quit looking at torque and amperage and motor current, things that were affecting but also gave us other issues that we really didn't know if the well was having fluid in it or not. So if you look at a typical card, what they're normally looking at is a, what we call a pump off set point. So if it starts to pump off, this card's going to keep moving over in the downstroke, less and less fillage. Now there's several methods out there that either you can put a point, that when the card goes past the point, it shuts it down. Some people will use an area, that if this area changes by so much, it's considered pump off. So very simple methods. You can also have a peak load setting so that you can catch stuck pumps and a minimum load setting so that you can look at rod parts. Well, some of the problems we've had on rod parts, if you have a deep rod part, maybe parts right at the pull rod, you got a lot of weight still there with that rod string. You still may get a little bit of a dynamometer card. So there's been a couple things that some people look at the whole inside area of the card to determine if you're having some kind of pump rod problem or in this case you can put a point here so in the upstroke if your traveling valve doesn't seat or if you're not picking up any weight it will come beneath that and you can shut the well down. So what you're wanting to do if you're having a failure is let's stop the well because we're not moving any fluid we won't burn up your stuffing box then we won't burn your v-belts off your motor if you part at the well. The later technology allowed us to do a downhole card, a pump card, right at the well site. So now we can see what is the true downhole fillage. As you can see, this was on a simulator, but it had almost two inches of surface stroke and about 150 inches of downstroke. So that's really an under-travel card. Our pump is moving less than our surface card is. But you can look at the fillage. A downhole card it should be a perfect rectangle. If it would have come down here, the well would have been full. But as you see, it's starting to pump off. Well, with this type of program, all you do is set a pump fillage, say 80%. So that you can say, I want to keep my well at 80% fillage. If it doesn't have at least 80%, it stops the well. Up here, you pick a point where if you use this, it's still nice to see this card to try to see what is the pump really doing. Because this has got all the rod stretch going on. You remember our slinky. That surface card we have our load cell here at the surface, and that's where we're measuring the weight. The downhole card is like putting that load cell down here at the pump. So we're trying to get rid of all this nice rod stretch to see what is the pump actually doing. Now, for those who don't understand a load cell, it's just like a scale. It's a strain gauge. So think of your fingers that we glue to metal. We put a voltage in, and we get a voltage out. And we know when the metal compresses, that voltage will change, and it's equivalent to so much voltage per pound is how we get what the weight is on the rod string. Uh, 